Let's say you have a view model in your Android project and the creation of this view model required two things. Let's say a user ID and something that can be automatically created such as a repository, for example. How you can create or co-create this view model using both an input from your code at the runtime and an automatic dependency such as a repository with the view model and with Hilt. We are going to see that in this video. So my good friends, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, we didn't post the video, so we are starting again. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are not. And let's get started. So here, let's pretend I'm having this application. It's a simple application in which I'm having something called a post view model. And in order to get the post or the user post, we need an ID that maybe is stored in shared preference or in database or somewhere, okay? And there is a repository by which we can get the data. The post repository is something simple. It will take a user ID, for example. And for the sake of example, I'm doing simple delay here. It's just a post repository with the things. If you know nothing about health, you can view my playlist here on YouTube. All right, so this is a simple constructor injection. This will be automatically created for us. This is a good thing. But here in the view model, we want to pass both the repository, which can be pretty simple like that. Let's do a simple constructor like the following. And then you can do private val, and you can use the repository, for example. And this can be automatically injected. We need just to do the following thing, which is inject constructor here. And you can see we have this one here. You can also do it via health like the following hit view model, so this will guarantee the automatic creation of this one. And now in order to create the view model, you can simply do private val like the following, you can name it view model, whatever you like, right? And then you do post view model like the following, and you do by view models. You can do it like that, you don't have any factory. You can create it like the following, nothing special, okay? And then you can use it to do your stuff. But here we need the post repository in order to get the user responses, all right? And you can directly return the following, nothing special. Now. Here, this is the problem. We need a user thing. Now, there is a solution, a lot of people do it, which is they create a function called init, right? And then in the init function here, they can do user ID like the following. And they can have a variable here, which is private var user ID, for example, which can be an int, which can be set to zero. And then they can simply change it like the following. After that, they can use it directly here, and this is fine. That works, but the major problem with this approach is that Let's say you forget to init it. So this is prone to error. Every time you need to use the view model before attempting to do any get user post, right? You need to make sure you did view model dot init. You need to make sure to call this init part with the user ID. Okay, let's pretend that this user ID is coming from the intent, for example, or from something else. Let's say it is coming here at this activity. Let's say it is another activity. So the ID is coming from the other activity. It's kind of from the intent. Usually we do it like following intent dot get parcelable, I don't know, parcelable extra, or let's say just simple int extra, or just an ID, okay? Let's pretend we have it coming from there. The other approach is to use something called assisted inject, okay? So what does it mean, assisted injection? Here, we want to assist in the creation of the view model, because by default, Hilt or Dagger will know how to create this one from this one. This is automatic creation. But to get the user ID here, to get the val, and call it user ID, which will be here always, Right? It's pretty difficult because it doesn't know how to generate it at compile time. It won't create it at compile time, it will be created in the runtime, but it needs to know how to create it during the compilation time. Okay? So in order to do this, we need something called assisted inject. It's a little bit boilerplate. We are going to need a lot of stuff, but it will be fine. Okay? So the first thing we need to do, well, this function will work just perfectly fine, no problem. We need to remove this. Now here we need to do two things. We need to create a factory for the view model on how to create it using that user ID. And here we need to tell it that the creation of this one is assisted. It's not normal injection, it's assisted injection. So the first thing we need to remove this one because we want to be generating automatic uh, factory for the view model, we are going to create our own. So we do hit assisted inject, okay? This is for the constructor. And for each parameter, you need to do something called, annotation called assisted, like the following. And sometimes there is a problem. Let's say you have two ends, for example, a user ID, Post ID, for example. How do you differentiate between those two ends? Here, you use the named thing. This is simply named uh, injections. Okay, not going to use that here. Now, in order to create this one, we need to create a factory. This will be created as an interface. Always create an interface, and let's call it Post View Model Factory, like following. Okay, and you need to annotate this one with Assisted Factory. Okay, so this is the factory that will create the view model for us. The implementation will be generated by Dagger Hilt, okay? So here you need to have a function called create, 
And here you need to pass the parameters that we are going to use in order to create this view model. Namely, it will be user ID. The result of this one will be post view model. Until now, this is fine, okay? So you can see that you are injecting into here. Awesome. Now we need a way to create the view model, okay? Using that factory. So you can do it wherever you want, but I would like to make it here with the view model themselves, okay? So we create a companion object that are going to be used outside, which is from the activity, right? And here, let's say provide view model, for example. Okay, this will be a function, of course. This will return us a factory. We need a view model provider dot factory, like the following. And here we need an implementation of that, which is object of view model provider dot factory, of course. Here you need a simple function, which is the create function. Okay, it will be as simple as that. But here is the thing. In this function, you are going to pass two things. Namely, first, the user ID. The second one is the factory we created here, okay? So let's call it just factory, like the following. And here, instead of returning the super one, we are going to use our factory, like the following, factory, in order to create with the user ID, and we need to return it as T, okay? And here we'll have a warning, so we can do it like the following, so on the view model, on this one, like just to suppress the unchecked cast, okay? So this is the boilerplate we need to write every time, okay? Because it is dependent on the different things. Now, in order to create the view model, we are not going to use this one anymore. We're going to create our own factory. First, we need to inject the factory here. Let's do an inject, let init var, for example, and let's call it factory. And guess what? It will be the post view model dot factory, the factory we created, which is this one, guys, right? And here, in order to create the view model, remember, we can use the function that we created, the global function, which is provide view model. You can name it create view model, whatever you like. And here, you need to provide two things, the user ID and the factory itself. So here is the factory, we injected it here. We need the user ID. Here, the user ID, as I said, you can get it, for example, from intent.getParcelBar extra. I don't know, you can also create it at the runtime using some kind of shared preference or something. Less, it doesn't matter. Here, I can provide the value of seven. And this way, I can create a view model like the following. It's kind of complex that we need multiple objects that will help us create, they will assist the creation of this view model. So as you can see, if we run it right now, we expect I'm logging something here, the user ID. So expect to see uh, the value of seven in the, in the test. It doesn't matter, it's just a simple application. So here I can go to the log cat, and here I can search for the system, and you are saying you are using seven. Okay, testing the app, and we are using seven. Okay, this is pretty much it on how to use the assisted inject. So as a recap, in order to do that, whatever you are creating, let's say you are creating presenter, view model, whatever you are creating, and you need different stuff, something you can get only at the runtime, and something you can know how you can create it in the compilation time, right? Always annotate it, the constructor with assisted inject, and annotate the parameters with the assisted annotation. Then you need to create a factory that will help us create this object, passing all the different stuff. And here, because we are in the view model, we need to do it in a special way. That's why we are using the factory here. If it was something else for presenter, it would be much simpler, okay? For the view model especially, we need to have an object of factory. So we are using this factory in order to create a view model factory that we can pass to this function because this view model this one will require a factory as you can see, okay? So this is pretty much it on how to use assisted inject. Let me know in the comment if you have any questions and if you didn't subscribe to my newsletter where I share every time and every week an actionable advice on how to get more productive using productivity stuff for developers, shortcuts and other processes. And also I have free checklist down below about code review and different aspects with more than 100 steps and actions and aspect you can see your code and do code review properly with your team. So thank you very much for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and always see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.